This is my workflow for CamTrack AR. What I typically do is come up with the idea, shoot this stuff, turn it into a compressed package, send it to my computer, and then organize the files. So when you open the app, you have to set the floor. As you can see here, it starts assessing, you know, the geometry in the room. It doesn't identify the cat. But we're going to set the floor plane by hitting this button, bottom left corner. And then we're going to have to set this little gizmo too. And that's going to give us an anchor point, an empty in the project file. We're going to get ready. And then we're going to click record. We're going to get a few seconds. Tracked footage. It looks like it's tracking pretty good. And now we're going to go to files. And when we go to files, we need to actually back out and then turn this folder into a compressed file just to share it. Probably don't need to do that. It's just a workflow that I typically do and send it over. Once you get it to your computer, it probably ends up in your downloads. You're going to want to send it to an external hard drive or whatever you work off of for your projects. I usually use an external hard drive for most of my projects. So you're going to have to unpack the file. It's going to have the date. And it's going to have a ton of different files in it. You'll see the raw video clip that we're going to need later. And we actually have a bunch of other files. The one we're going to need for Blender is .hfcs. So I'm going to open up Blender. This add-on has to be added into Blender. So right here, you click this down arrow, install from disk, and then find it and install the zip file. And this is going to bring in HitFilm AR app. Okay, so mine is ready to go. Your, your project isn't going to start like this. This is just my default file. So this is actually what it looks like when I open up Blender. The reason I have a, a model here is because she is to scale. So if I start designing a world, it's very easy to decide how big things need to be because I have a person for reference. We're not even going to worry about that. We're going to import our HFCS file. We're going to go to where that file was located, the folder we just created. And I'm going to pull in that file. It's only going to show me that one file. And nothing happened, but it did. It just doesn't look like it did. Over here is a camera. We're going to get rid of this camera because I don't need it. Delete it. Then I'm going to hit zero on my number pad. And I'm going to hit space bar. And that's sticking to the ground perfectly. But does it line up with the footage? We actually have to bring in the footage now. So let's click on this camera here. Click on it. We're in details, background images, select it, drop down, add image, movie clip, open. I'm gonna pull in that movie clip. Actually gonna put the opacity all the way up and I can see there's a little extra contrast being added to my, my video here. I'm gonna go over here. Color management, switches to standard and none. And that's gonna make it exactly how it was when I shot it. For something like this, that's what I want because I already recorded it with accurate colors. Now we have a little issue we're going to have. Your timeline's probably open, but I need to open mine down here. But if I zoom in by using my scroll wheel, you can see it starts on zero, not on one. So I'm going to actually have to move that because if I hit play, my, my little gizmo is going to vibrate on the floor. It's because nothing is lined up. Now it shouldn't do that. Now you can see it's stuck to the floor very well all right now we're ready to do whatever you want this is the part where you get creative so that's how you get the tracking info in but that's really just the tip of the iceberg compositing is, is a big part of, of how this is going to work and lighting and there's a lot of different variables here so if i select that and hit shift s i can do cursor to select it and now that gives most selected i can hit shift a and add a plane i'm going to grz rotate GX tasks. Try to get it there, okay. So yeah, it's pretty lined up. So this could actually act as a shadow catcher if I wanted to put something in the scene. So let's just do that real quick. I'm gonna actually tab into edit mode. I'm gonna control R, give this thing some some edge loops so I can delete some of the faces. Let's select hit three, select that, hit X, oops. Control Z, X, faces. Tab out of edit mode, now I have that little piece. All right, so we have that little area, but how do we get it as, let's say, a shadow catcher? Because right now, if I go into the rendered view, that's what it looks like here. We're gonna go into cycles. So leave an experimental, okay. I'm gonna click on this over here. 
click on object properties, visibility, shadow catcher. Now it's actually a shadow catcher. Now if I click on it and go to materials, I'm gonna give it a new material. I am going to just give it a base color of that, or turn the roughness down. Actually, I don't. let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now it's just the shadow catcher within the scene. There's really no light in this seat and need an HDRI. I have already actually taken an HDRI of this environment. We'll come over here. Environment texture. Okay. I have one from yesterday. I believe it's right here. I'm just going to bring in a model real quick. Something I can stick right there. I'm going to turn the roughness up. Give me more of that shadow. I'm looking. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, he's running in place. That's pretty neat. So you can see that shadow's playing quite nicely. But if I hit render, it is not going to render properly. I'm just going to get this guy. He's going to be in a transparent abyss. So we're going to actually go to compositing, use nodes. We're going to add a viewer node. I hit shift A, type for viewer node. Boom, good to go. All right. Now we're going to hit alpha over. And then movie clip. We're going to drop down, select our movie clip. I believe that would go first. And this would go there. And this would go there. That would go there. And let's see what happens. It's weird. He was wearing clothes. I remember. See? It wasn't. Clothes parent. Okay, yeah, you should totally wear them next time. All right, I want to turn that way down. Let's put out 60. Even when we have denoise arm, all right? We got my compositor settings are good. I could use like a glare node, that kind of thing. So this, this is where you can do some node stacking and get things to be altered, or you can render them, just render this layer, this render layer here, straight to the composite without the alpha over. And that's going to leave you with this naked guy here. Let's say I want to do the composition work somewhere else, like After Effects. I'm going to just render the, the top layer, the actual 3D stuff. I'm not going to render the video file and bake it underneath because I want to be able to control them separately at a later time in another program. But I'm going to leave it alpha over for simplicity and no comping necessary after the fact. I'll save this. I will call it Man Rugged. Now I want to render it. I do have a shadow catcher, so I have to render in cycles. There are ways to do it in Eevee. It just takes a while to set up and everything. So we're going to go down to our output settings. I'm going to click output folder. I am going to go back into that folder where my project exists. I'm going to make a folder called render. Double click. Just put render one underscore. Now it's going to number them sequentially. I am 30 frames per second. That's what I shot in 220 frames total file extensions. I'm going to leave it at PNG RGB alpha. I'll leave it right there. Color management will stay the follow the scene. And then I'm going to save it again. I'm going to put it into the regular mode here. And then we're going to do render animation and we're going to let it do its job. And then um, what, what I would do after this is I would take this into After Effects or into any editing software, DaVinci, whatever it is. Bring the PNG sequence in, however you, you would have to do that in each particular program. Usually I use Final Cut just because really efficient in it. Uh, I can do it very quickly. And then when it's all said and done, you have a, a video.